Hello guys, this is Aces here and today I'm going to talk about how to be a true skeptic. One of the first steps to be a true skeptic is to doubt absolutely everything, including your own beliefs. These beliefs include God, ghosts, demons, the devil, uh, Bigfoot, and any other claim that has not been proven. Another thing to point out is that you must also doubt claims that are nothing but presumptions. Presumptions that are that seem to be generally accepted, whether in the scientific community or not, but have no proof and basis whatsoever. The presumption is not opinion based, but rather a scientific explanation for an observation or a, or a question, but has no proof and value. For example, let's talk about evolution. Let's say a scientist mentions um, some kind of fossil and says that the fossil has traits that are a lot similar to their ancestors and is therefore evidence for evolution. Now a skeptic will come along and say, well, where's the proof that it was done by evolution? Then the scientist will say, well, there seems to be a correlation with the fossils and their an and the ancestors. Even the animals like chickens you see today have similar characteristics that dinosaurs have. A skeptic will basically say, well, that's only a presumption. Where's the proof? I could easily say that maybe aliens designed them with similar characteristics on their environment. Or maybe the, the grand designer, which is called God, invented them with similar characteristics to adapt to their environments. What if that was the case? Where's the proof that evolution lies there? And that's the problem with science and God. The problem with science is that science cannot absolutely prove what they're claiming or what they're saying how it was done. They could only back things up with evidence done through empirical research. But it all falls down to falsification. Proofs only exist in math and things that can be directly observed. Nothing less, nothing more. This is why true skeptics are agnostic and claim that you cannot know for certain that the answer is true or not. Now, the second step to be a true skeptic is to suspend judgment based on evidence. If a person comes and tells you, God exists, a skeptic will say, well, where is the evidence that God is real? I won't believe in God until you actually prove to me that he is real. If no evidence is shown, the skeptic won't believe the claim at all. Now, on the contrary to proper belief, a skeptic also doubts the negative. If someone says that God is not real, the skeptic will say, well, where is the proof that God is not real? Now, here comes the trickiest part that disbelievers use to avoid proving their claim. Oh, I don't have to prove that God is not real. How can you prove something that is non-existent? The burden of proof lies on the person making the claim, not the person who is doubting it. The funniest part about it is that the disbeliever is actually making the claim because he's making a claim of the universe. Just like you're saying that God is real, you're implying to the universe that he actually is real. Now, the same thing happens to saying that he is not real. The only difference is that it's just the opposite. But they're both claims of the universe. The only times you don't have to prove anything is when you say, I believe God is real or I don't believe that he's real. That is basically implying that you do believe that he is real or that he isn't, but you have no evidence to show otherwise. In other words, you're showing a favor to either he is real or not real, but you know you, you have no evidence to show that. A belief differs from a knowledgeable claim. If you're saying that God is not real, then you're either applying that you know for sure that he is not real or you're just being intellectually dishonest. This is what atheists or anti-theists do. They say that there is no God and yet they don't know for, for certain how to back that up. Be why? Because they're being intellectually dishonest. If they were being honest, they would say, well, I don't believe that he's real or I, or, I don't know if he's real. Because you're not making a claim of the universe. You're just basically implying what your current position of belief is. This also counts for disbelief and agnosticism. But when it comes to claiming yes or no, then that's where you'll have to prove it. Now, the final step to be a true skeptic is to not follow cynicism. Now, let's say someone presents evidence for a claim and I say, nah, that, that, that evidence cannot be right. It must be wrong. Why? Because it doesn't fit with the scientific paradigm. So it must be wrong. No matter how much evidence you have, it will always be wrong. 
that right there is cynicism and a pseudo skeptic. A pseudo skeptic only base his judgment on disbeliefs rather than evidence. A pseudo skeptic will basically deny the evidence for a claim regardless how good it is. A pseudo skeptic also throws criticism based on negative assumptions no proofs whatsoever. A true skeptic on the other hand bases his judgment based on evidence. If the skeptic has evidence to refute the claim then the skeptic will say it with uh, evidence backed up to the table. But a pseudo skeptic will come along and attack the evidence for the claim without any evidence on the table and just assert that it must be wrong or that there was something wrong in there. A true skeptic can also rightfully say to the pseudo skeptic prove it. Prove to me that what you're saying against the evidence for the claim is true. If you cannot back yourself up with that negativity of yours, then I don't see no point of why I should even accept your argument. This is the attitude you must have in order to be a true skeptic. You have to question absolutely everything, even from both sides, not just one side, whether it's the believer side or the disbeliever side. Question absolutely everything and only follow the evidence. That's the only way to be a true skeptic. Alright guys, uh, this is Aces here and thanks for watching and if you have any questions or concerns please let me know in the comment section below and if you like and if you agree with my um, was the argument please leave a like on the video and thanks for watching.